So I get migraines, both my daughters get migraines and my mom used to. Does that mean that we just have the gene for migraine and we should just take our meds and hope for the best? No, new genetic testing has shown us that there are almost 200 different genes that influence whether or not you will develop migraines. And the cool thing, you can actually influence whether or not those genes are active in your body or not. So your genes are really just like a factory. They make stuff. And that factory can either be on or off. And so when it's on, the gene is making whatever it is that it's supposed to make, usually proteins. And when it's off, it doesn't. Now it turns out that lifestyle choices influence whether or not a lot of these genes are turned on or off. So that is what is super cool about what we've learned about migraine genetics, because there are so many different genes where your choices influence whether or not those genes are on or off. Now, for those of us with migraine, the studies are showing that there are three systems of genes in your body that are really responsive to lifestyle changes. So I wanna spend this video telling you about those three systems. All right, so how did we learn all this stuff? This is a study that was published in 2023 called The Genetics of Migraine, Where Are We Now? I've got the link to it below the publication there in case you wanna take a deeper dive. But what they did is they put DNA from 100,000 different people with migraine into this giant computer and said, okay, what do these guys have in common? And this is what they found. They found abnormalities in all these different systems that are around the migraine brain in the middle. So abnormalities in all of these different systems influence whether or not you will get migraines. And if so, how badly you get them. I wanna focus on three of those. The first one we're gonna focus on is insomnia. I feel like all of us who have headaches know that there's a connection between our sleep and our headaches. If we don't sleep right for a while, we are gonna get headaches for sure, right? But this is the cool stuff that you can find out from this new type of genetic testing. So here's mine. This is a gene called the clock gene. Clever, right? <laughs> anyway, so it turns out that I've actually got an okay clock gene, thank goodness. And my particular version is associated with normal sleep and waking patterns. I just think it's incredible that we can find this information out about ourselves these days. I mean, when I started off my career as a neurologist, we could not get this information about our bodies. It didn't exist. It hadn't been done yet. So this is just so empowering that this information is available to us now. So here's a real life example of how this information helps you. So if you go to bed at 10 o'clock every night and wake up at six, your body's like, okay, great. This is what we're doing. I am going to increase the expression of genes that help make this body go to bed at 10 and wake up at six because that's what we need. That's what we're doing every night. You epigenetically modify all of those sleep genes, not just the clock gene, all of the genes that are involved in your sleep system so that your body is hardwired to help you go to sleep at 10 and wake up at six. Now, in contrast, if you go to bed at two o'clock in the morning one night, then your body is confused. Like just imagine all the workers coming to the factory at 10 o'clock at night and they're like, what? We're not working until two in the morning. What the heck? You know, it confuses the system. You're working against your biology. So once you know this information about yourself, you can make choices that help to upregulate or downregulate the expression of genes that will help you sleep. And if you find out that you have genes related to your circadian rhythms, your sleep cycles that are more challenged, then you know this has to be a bigger priority. On the other hand, if you know that your genes for sleep are kind of okay, then you probably don't have to make it as big of a priority in your life. All right, what else have we learned? Irritable bowel syndrome, definitely linked with migraine. So what does that tell us you can get this gene checked for example that tells you whether or not you're likely to be lactose intolerant so the gene that i have is associated with reduced lactase persistence and potential lactose intolerance strongly dependent on post weaning diet okay guys i have no idea what my post weaning diet was and even if i did know i couldn't go back and change it but what I do know because of this is that it is likely that the genes that process lactose from milk in my body, they turned off a long time ago, probably around the time I was two. I do not like this piece of information about my body. 
So even though I don't like knowing this information, it does help me because I know what choice I need to make in order to reduce my chances of irritable bowel and in order to reduce my chances of getting severe migraines. And it's so much better than trial and error, like, oh, let's just try stopping lattes for three weeks and see if that helps, you know? That might help or might not, even if you have the same genetics I do. Because what if you make that one change and you give up your lattes for three weeks and it doesn't help you? Then you're like, oh, I must tolerate dairy just fine, right? That's what you're gonna conclude. But let's say that not only do you have problems with Lactose, you also had five other things that you don't know about going on under the surface and you didn't fix any of those other five things. And so it was those other five things that were making you still have headaches. Do you see what I'm saying? You got to get that information about your health so you know exactly what you need to do in order to get better. And the Third area where knowing your genes matters is in mood. Now, I want to point out the top condition here, depression, that they found to be linked with migraine in this study. So we've known that depression is linked with migraine for a very long time. It's a chicken and egg kind of thing. You know, are you depressed and then you get migraines or are you getting so many migraines and then you get pressed? And the truth is they just go together. That's all. They go together. Now, the genetics of neurotransmitters are super, super complicated. Like I can't just show you in a screenshot like I can for the other things. But once you have that information about your body, it gives you actionable strategies to reduce your headaches and also to improve your mood, to improve your emotional resilience. And first of all, I think it's just validating to know, yeah, my brain, it does not make chemicals the way other people's brains do. And that's why I experience the symptoms that I do. And second of all, some of the genetic problems actually give you actionable tips. Like, are there certain supplements you should take and other ones that you don't need to bother with? And third, I think it tells you, you know, should you reach for tools like prescription medications or therapy, or maybe you want to tackle it with lifestyle changes, you know, decreasing the amount of time you spend scrolling, increasing your time in nature, increasing your social connections to other people. Once you have the data, then you can take action in the way that you want to take action, but at least you know you need to take action. So to summarize, modern day genetic testing is so important because there isn't a gene for migraines. There are a couple hundred of them, and many of them respond to the lifestyle choices that you make. So finding out which lifestyle choices you need to make and which ones you don't have to bother with is an absolute goldmine of information, not just for reducing your migraines, but for reducing all of these other things that migraine is associated with. And I want to make sure you know that this information is accessible to you right here and now without a doctor's order. And I think this information is absolutely critical for people with migraines to have. Migraine is still the number one cause of disability in women under 50. It has a huge impact on our lives. And we need every tool we can get our hands on to make our lives better, to reduce our migraines, and to improve all of the other symptoms that go along with migraine. So if you're ready to get this information about your body so that you can take action in ways that are targeted and effective, then join me for a free webinar so we can talk about it. You can go to calldrbarrett.com to schedule.